Are you in the Christmas spirit or the Grinchmas spirit? Either way, I think you're going to really enjoy today's compilation video. It's 13 Grinch themed DIYs. Some of them are from last year and then some are from this year. I think you're really going to enjoy it. So let's get started. On this channel, I love sharing easy DIYs and budget home decor. And if we haven't met yet, my name is Lisa and this is our gray house. I didn't show this part, but I took some paint stir sticks and I cut them down to size and then I just used wood glue to glue them together. And I'm using folk art paint in the color citrus lime, I think it is, citrus green, and I'm painting it. I'm painting, I'm making one sign and then a little mini sign as you can see there. And then I'm using folk art paint or Waverly chalk paint in the color crimson to add red at the top. And I was kind of using my little uh, craft stick there to gauge where I was going to paint. But as you can see, I'm, I think you guys know what I'm trying to make here. <laughs> but then I'm painting that paint stir stick with antique white and I'm going to paint the little craft stick at the, there I am. I'm painting that as well. <laughs> now I'm adding the eyes. I've glued on the little stick already, I think, but um, I'm making Grinch, the Grinch. And I'm just kind of freehanding his face. I did go back with a thicker paint pen and kind of do his mouth a little bit darker. Then I just used a yellow paint pen for his eyes. And here I am trying to kind of, I don't know, darken it up a little bit. <laughs> Sometimes I want to say, stop messing with it, Lisa. <laughs> I really do love how this one turned out. I think it turned out cute. I did go back later and kind of go over the Mary Grinchmas part on both of those to kind of make it stand out a little bit more, but it's super easy to make and turned out really cute. Now y'all know I've got to do a book stack and I'm actually kind of recreating the one that I did last year, but putting the colors in different order. For the green, I used folk art matte paint in the color citrus green. And then for the middle section, I'm using folk art chalk paint in the color white. And I used painter's tape to protect the white so it wouldn't accidentally get paint on it because for the bottom, I'm using Christmas red. And on the ends, I had just freehanded the green and the white. So I also went back and cleaned up those lines. And I used my Cricut to make a vinyl decal that says, You're Mean One, Mr. Grinch. And I used the font Grinch 2.0, which I think I got from Defont.com. And I also embellished one side with a red with white polka dot rib, um, ribbon. And I just tied it in a knot, just trying to keep it like super simple. And now that I'm watching <laughs> all of this back, I see that I'm, I realize I'm missing the apostrophe on there. And I'm giving this to someone, so I need to fix that. And it still turned out super cute though. And y'all tell me what you think about it in the comments below. Now DIY number two is a simple ornament and I'm taking this little cup that I got from the party section at Dollar Tree and I'm tracing around it onto some cardboard. I cut that out and I make sure I'm not cutting it too small as it has to fit the opening of the little cup. And then I paint the front and the back with that citrus green color. And my idea was to fill the cup with something green. And I saw these green pom-poms and I think I saw them at Hobby Lobby. And then I thought of another project to use them for so I bought these little foam beads from Dollar Tree and now follow me on this. I thought I'll put some Mod Podge down and put some foam beads on it and there to like make it look full. Y'all, these foam beads like were possessed or something. They, I was trying to wrangle them and they just kept moving like totally on their own. I didn't even have the ceiling fan or anything on. And so then I poured a bunch in the cup, but they were not easy to work with. It was crazy. I did put some hot glue around the edge of the cup. And yes, I know it's plastic and not really the best option, but it is what it is. And so I didn't realize that the bottom of the cup had like a little edge to it. So instead of drawing on a face, I glued on a wooden heart that I had painted red and that's it. And that's super simple, easy project. And it turned out cute. Now, this project is going to be a great example of doing it one way, not working out. So you have to go to plan B and I'm just painting the entire frame with white chalk paint. And I used some washi tape to create some diagonal lines of different sizes. And I didn't have any real pattern in mind, just kind of eyeballing it. And then I used the Christmas red paint and I painted the frame. And before it was dry, I removed the washi tape to kind of see how, you know, you can kind of see how it looks. And I repaint any lines if I think it needs it. And then here's the mistake. So I didn't prep the chalkboard. I just painted it right on top. And then second mistake, I used permanent vinyl to make a, stair, a stencil. And then I painted the same color on first and then painted on the white. And when I removed the stencil, I mean, you're fixing to see it. I just, it pulls up the green paint. Womp womp. So I scraped it all off and then I went with plan B, which was basically to repaint it and make a decal out of white vinyl. But this time 
I used Expressions Vinyl Paper Transfer Tape and it worked like a charm and it didn't pull up any paint. And this is how it turned out. I added a messy bow in the corner and I did outline the letters so that they pop a little bit more, but tell me what you think. All right, here's another super easy DIY. I just painted these blocks that I got from Dollar Tree white all over. And then I made another stencil and I applied those to one side of the cube. So the W one on one cube, the H one on another cube and so on. And then I painted over the stencil with the same white paint as the base. And for the cube that had the bill on it, I painted it with the Christmas red. And after painting, I removed the stencil so it doesn't dry and make it harder to remove. So like while it's still wet. And then for the other cubes, it's the same process, but this time with the citrus green color. I paint on the green and while it's still wet, I remove the vinyl and then I paint the next one. Stack them up and you have a super cute decor piece. I love it. Tell me what you think. Last DIY turns out so cute. Dollar Tree has these things that were like drawers or like cube and cube type thing. Anyway, I paint them all sides with that citrus green color. And then I take this scrapbook paper, which apparently I'm not going to, I'm going to keep it a secret, not show you right away, but I trace the side of the cube that has the cutout piece because I'm going to cover it with the paper. And I put a little bit of Mod Podge on that side and I press down the paper and let it dry. And now that it's dry, I take my finger sander and I sand down the edges to give it a smooth finish. And this is a great way to trim off the excess scrapbook paper and um, it, it finishes out really nice. So then I also take my drill and start drilling holes in the middle of what will be the top. Because this is not good wood and it can splinter easily, I start with a really small drill bit, bit and gradually move up to the larger drill bit. And then just off camera, I have a picture of Grinch, Grinch's face that I'm using as kind of a guide and I sketch out the face onto these cubes and I go back with a black paint pen and go over what I just sketched. Now for the eyes, I start off with a yellow paint pen to fill them in and I go back in with a deeper yellow craft paint to help them stand out more. And then I take the black paint pen to draw the pupils or I don't know, is it heck? I don't know what it's called, but it is, I'm drawing the eye. You can see I'm drawing in the eye. Now for the fur, the tuft of fur on the top of his head, I thought about using this thing that I got from Dollar Tree. It's like a bow. It's in the gift wrapping section. I think it looks fun, but not quite what I was going for. So I'm just going to use this bow that I got from Hobby Lobby and it's, I'm just taking off some feathers and then I'm trying to attach them together with some masking tape. And they aren't the easiest to work with, to be honest. And also my cats thought it was a toy for them. So there's that, <laughs> but they kind of kept like flying all over and stuff. And then I put each bundle of feathers together. And then I just put that in the hole that's on top of the cube. And I use some hot glue on the inside to secure it. And that's how they turned out. I think they look so fun and cute. Tell me what you think below. I'm taking some rubbing alcohol. I got that little decanter thing from Dollar Tree. Anyways, I'm taking some rubbing alcohol and I wiped off that glass ornament. I got those from Hobby Lobby and I had made some crystal balls back in at Halloween time and they turned out so cute. But anyway, I had one left over and so I thought, oh, I'm going to make like a Grinch themed ornament because I have some other stuff that's left over. I'll show you in a second. Anyway, I made this decal with my Cricut and I'm just applying it ever so carefully to the glass ball. And I messed up a little bit. There's like one little spot that I got to put back on, but it actually transferred pretty easily. So I was happy about that. But y'all, I got those stupid foam beads. <laughs> those things like they get static and then they don't like just pour they like stick to stuff and so I try to make like a little funnel and get you can see them they're getting everywhere and it's just it's like ridiculous <laughs> it's like I don't I can't even explain it but I was just trying to do a craft with them so I could use them up because I'm like I'm not buying these again this was not worth it to me and I don't mean to be all womp womp <laughs> but they were just messy. So then I tried to put the, the little um, thing back in, the, the ornament top, and then <laughs> it got stuck down. It, it popped down into the ornament ball, so I lost it. I was like, see, that's just like, that's just great. And I've got the, all these little foam beads flying everywhere, but I made the best of it. I took some jute twine and made a little loop there, as you can see. And then I'm just trying to take some E6000 so that I can glue down the topper to the ornament to that glass ornament box. I don't need that opening up and then the beads just flying everywhere. I mean, like they were stuck in my hair. They were on the floor. It was just really. <laughs> so we're just about done. I'm going to wrap it up. And I had to remember like 
there was yellow in his eyes, right? Yeah. So <laughs> I look it up online just to make sure. And then I take my yellow paint pen and I kind of fill in where his eyes are. I have to wipe off just a little bit because kind of got, got in a place where I didn't want it. Anyway, fix that up. And this is how it turned out. And I think it turned out really good, even though I like, I really don't like those foam beads. <laughs> I don't know if you could tell or not, but I don't like those. Oh gosh, y'all, they just got everywhere. Anyways, it turned out really super cute. I love it. I just love it. I don't even know what else to say. We are kicking off DIY number one by painting these three jumbo craft sticks front and back with folk art matte paint in the color citrus green. And we'll take another three jumbo craft sticks and we are going to use Waverly Wax in the color Antique to stain the front and back. Now I normally paint it on and then wipe it off with a damp cloth, but for this I'm just wiping it on with a damp cloth and it dries pretty quickly. And now that both sets are dry, I'm using some painter's tape to attach them together and I figure out how long I want them to be and then I cut them off. And I'm using those cutoff pieces and hot gluing them to the back to hold them together and to stabilize them. And for the Grinch's face, I penciled in first and then I used a black, uh, black paint pen to go over it. Now my paint pen seemed drier, so I've done to mess with them, but it comes out fine. And I used a yellow paint pen to fill in the eyes. And for Max's face, and if you didn't know, that is the name of the Grinch's dog. I basically do the same thing. I use a black paint pen to paint on the face. And after the yellow paint is dry, I take a black paint pen and make the eyes. And for Max's eyes, I use a white pen, paint pen to make those little dots. And I didn't show this part, but I cut out the Grinch's hat out of cardboard, just a general shape, similar to the one that you're going to see later on in this video. And I'm painting it with Waverly chalk paint in the color crimson. And for Max's antler, I also cut it out of cardboard and I'm painting it with folk art matte paint in the color starlight gold. And I cut out the ear shape again out of cardboard and painted it brown. And once they were dry, I hot glued them to Max's head. I'm going to attach the cardboard hat to the Grinch's head with hot glue and then, and I need to add some fluff to the hat of course, so I had some pom-pom balls and I cut one in half. It didn't hold together like I thought it would and it got a little messy, so I tried to clean that up as best as I could and I did add a whole pom-pom to the tip of his hat. Max's ears are on, but he needs his antlers, so I attached that to the top of his head with hot glue. Here's how DIY number one turned out, and they are both so cute. They're simple to make and super budget friendly. In fact, the total cost, not including the paint, as I always have that on hand, was less than a dollar. I got a 30 pack of the craft sticks at Lowe's, and they were $1.98, and the cardboard was left over from a box. You can't get much cheaper than that. I found this honeycomb shaped sign at Dollar Tree and I used a combination of my heat gun, my little spatula thingy, and my little blade thing to carefully pry off the frame that was on it. And I wanted to remove the paper that was on there so I got a wet washcloth and I let it soak for a bit on the sign and the paper came off pretty easily with that scraper tool thing. I don't know what you call that, that blade thing. And then I painted the entire sign with Waverly chalk paint in the color white. And this particular paint is really thick. It's like pudding almost like consistency. So I did use a little bit of water to thin it out just a bit. Citrus green is going to be the Grinch color of the day. And I actually Googled what color to use for the Grinch. And I saw citron green, lime green, parakeet, bright green. So I had some citrus green on hand and it looked good to me. So I went with that. And as you just saw, I put the frame on there to kind of show where to paint it. But I go back with painter's tape later to mark it off. So it's a, a cleaner line. And I did cut out these decals using my Cricut and I used the font green eggs and spam. And I think I got that from defont.com. And I also think I made this a bit harder than I needed to, you know, like in your mind, it'll work out one way, but in actual real life, not so much. <laughs> so you'll see what I'm talking about. But as an example, I used permanent vinyl instead of removable. So there's that. And the first part of this works okay. I use the vinyl as a stencil and I stipple it on on that crimson red and citrus green paint. Seems pretty straightforward and obviously the supervisor on duty wasn't doing actual quality control because it took a good amount of picking at it and me trying to be careful not to nick the wood too much 
and to get all that permanent vinyl off. Uh, anyway, normally I either put down a thin layer of Mod Podge or a thin layer of the base color so that'll help it not bleed and have a crisp stencil, but yeah. This was a little frustrating and I'm glad I didn't put down any extra stuff that's going to make it stick more. And I'm just repeating the process on the other side. I have these little sponge brushes that I got from Hobby Lobby and I like them a bit better than the ones that I got from Dollar Tree because I feel like they're denser. And if you don't have either of, of those sponges, um, I know some DIYers use makeup st uh, sponges to stencil that as well. And again, I have the same issues removing the permanent vinyl as you see me doing here. And at the bottom here, this is supposed to be like an on-off button. And I left the letters on there because I wanted them to be white and the green dot I covered with a dot that I made with my Cricut. But for this stencil, for the button part, I was supposed to weed the inside out and instead I weeded the outer vinyl. You know, and I couldn't believe that. I, I was just getting so frustrated. I'd used permanent vinyl to begin with. Crafting's supposed to be fun. But um, anyway, so I used the shape and I traced around and I used my larger sponge brush to fill in the space. And because the lines weren't super crisp, I went back in with a detail brush to try to clean that up a bit. And because I had used that permanent vinyl, the letters messed up a little bit. <sighs> Just insert heavy sigh there, y'all. I painted the outer frame with folk art chalk paint in the color rich black and I don't show this on camera but I actually go back and paint all the way around the outer rim of the sun with the rich black as well. And I wanted to show y'all I don't always use my Cricut for my projects and if you don't have one don't let that stop you from creating. I just took a pencil and I rubbed it all over the back of this Grinch face that I printed out and I'm going to use that to trace on the face. and. You could also use graphite paper. You could use carbon paper. You have options, y'all. And so I place that face where I want and I use my pencil to trace it. And then I go back with a black paint pen and go over those lines. It's very easy to do. But if you have a steady hand, you could actually like use a detail brush or something. Now, my paint pens are a bit on the drier side, like I've already said. So I feel like I have to work with them a bit more. But they, you know, they do the job. And I use that yellow paint pen to fill in the eyes. And I try to fix that on off button with a white and a black paint pen. And I just use that pick as a guide so I know where to place the eyes. And then I hot glue the frame back on. I really love how this turned out despite the challenges or, or maybe because of the challenges. I just love it. I think it all goes so well together. Now this only cost me $1.25 to make and that was for the sign. The rest of the stuff, the paint, the paint pens, I already had that on hand. And I'm just kind of showing you up a close. It's not perfect y'all. It's not perfect but you know what in life really is perfect. So I think it turned out super cute. DIY number three is going to be a garland. I'm taking this little tag that I got from Hobby Lobby and painting it with the citrus green. This came in a set, but they also have like a similar shaped ones at Dollar Tree. The strand of beads actually came from Dollar Tree. And I haven't seen this particular type in a while, but right now Hobby Lobby has a large strand of beads in their fall section for 66% off. Y'all, that's a really good deal. So to paint these, I use a bamboo skewer that I got from Dollar Tree and I use a bit of painter's tape so that they don't slide off. And for this project, I'm putting on 12 beads. I'm painting them with citrus green and putting them on the skewer, at least for me, this allows me to kind of like get all the way around the beads pretty easily. And I use a smaller paintbrush and I start on the end that is not taped off. I paint the tops of those each bead first and then I flip the skewer over and I paint the other side and I set them in a pot that holds my paintbrushes to dry. And I take eight more beads and I repeat the process painting them with Waverly chalk paint in the color white. And finally, I paint four beads with Waverly chalk paint in the color crimson and again doing the same process that I did the other two times. Everything has had a chance to dry so I'm stringing up the beads onto some twine. I give myself some extra twine when I'm making a garland. I almost always put a small amount of tape on the end of the twine to make it pointy so it'll be easier to string the beads. And I pattern my beads this time 
three green, a white, hello captain, <laughs> a white, a red, and another white bead. And I repeat that three times. To make the tassel, I wrap the twine around my hand 20 times, 20-ish times, you know. And I push the beads to the other end so I have plenty of room to work. And I thread the twine from the beads through the top of my tassel and tie it tightly. And I cut a piece of twine off about four times the length of the tassel and I tie it towards the top to make the head of the tassel. And then I wrap it around the top a couple of times and knot it again. And I cut that piece longer so it will blend in with the tassel. And then I use masking tape to make a pointy end on the twine with the, that the beads are on. And I'm going to thread that back through the beads. I think that this gives your tassel a much cleaner look and then the little tail is only about three or four beads long and on that last bead I add a dab of hot glue to hold it in place. Okay so I guess I put it footage of me hot gluing the um, beads but there you go that's how you do it. <laughs> So for that piece of twine that we used to tie off the head of the tassel, I pulled those down, those two tails down, hot glue them to a few of the strands that are close to them. And then to finish up the tassel, I cut the loops and then I trim it to the desired length that I want. For the other end of the garland, I'm just using a black paint pen to put on the Grinch's face on that tag shape and you'll see that on the garland I have a good amount of twine on that end I always try to give myself enough wiggle room if I can <laughs> now I like to make a slip knot to attach the tag or whatever shape I'm using to the garland and I try to get it as close to the beads but at the same time allowing them a bit of room to move around so the garland isn't like stiff or anything and I just like the tassel end I, I like to thread the tail of the twine back into the bead so you can't see it. And like I said, it gives it a cleaner look. And I do just a little bit more work on the Grinch's face. And that's it. This garland turned out really well. And I think it's a really good length too. The beads were from a longer strad from Dollar Tree. So they were $1.25. The tag was from a set of 12 and I think you know, it could cost me less than a dollar and I already had all the other stuff. So yeah, I'd say for a total of $2.25, that's a pretty inexpensive project and turned out super cute. What can I say? I like book stacks. Although for the size tier trays that I have, these crates from Dollar Tree are just a wee bit too big, but I had it in my stash. So it'll work for this project and I'm taping off the crate and painting the middle section with Waverly chalk paint in the color white. And the bottom section will be that folk art paint in the color citrus green. And the top section will be Waverly chalk paint in the color crimson. And I did use my Cricut to cut out this decal. The font is green eggs and spam and I got it from defont.com and I just attach it to the crate. Fun fact though, <laughs> I actually had to redo this part because the first decal was too big for the space and yes, I'm using that permanent vinyl that I had other issues with earlier, but I did want this part to be more permanent. So, you know, I also had to fix the C on the bottom part there. I wrap some twine around one end of the crate and hot glue it in place. And I attach a simple bow to the top with hot glue. And that's it y'all. Pretty simple and easy. The crate cost me $1.25 and the rest of the stuff is normal stuff I have on hand. So, very budget friendly and it's pretty super cute. I'm taking this wood ghost shape that I got from Dollar Tree and painting it with the same folk art paint in the color citrus green. And here's another Dollar Tree wood shape and I'm filling in the hole at the top of this witch's hat with spackle that I got from Dollar Tree. And the bottom part is painted with Waverly chalk paint in the color white. And I sand down that area that had spackle on it and I tape off the white portion so it doesn't get messed up and I paint the top with Waverly chalk paint in the color crimson. And I was trying to show y'all that I didn't sand down that spackle enough. You can still kind of see it. It's not a big deal, but it's something to watch out for if you try this project. I'm taking a white paint pen and outlining the top of the hat as well as the bottom of the ghost to give it some more detail. Those dang dry paint pens. 
And then I just hot glue the two pieces together and you see what's happening here? We're making it at a Grinch. I mean, I figured <laughs> y'all knew what I was gonna be, but I think it's pretty cool that I could use two Halloween shapes for this. I saw this on Pinterest when I was, I saw the gnomes that I made in one of my last videos and I thought it was super cute. So take a black, black paint pen to add some detail to the white part of the hat. And again, you see me working with my dry paint pens, but I just keep having to dab them to make them work. And then for this Grinch, I, need, I just need to add the mouth with a black paint pen. And earlier I forgot to paint the bead for the nose, so I'm just doing that now. And I'm doing it the same way as I did the other beads for the garland, beaded garland thing. And then I just add a small dab of hot glue to attach the nose. And that's it. I love how this turned out too. So fun, cute, and easy. And as far as cost, I only used one piece of each of the wood shapes and at Dollar Tree, they come in a set. So just say I bought two sets, that's a dollar 25 each. And the bead, I mean, I'm not even gonna count that, but <laughs> let's just say 250 total. Not bad for a super cute DIY. So that last one was my favorite. I just love how it turned out. In fact, I bought more of that this year because I thought I could make like a garland out of it, you know? I just thought it was so cute. So you tell me which one of the 13 was your favorite and let me know in the comments below. I'd really love to know which one you liked best. And thank you so much for watching my video. Stay tuned because I've got some more really awesome videos coming out in this next month that I'm so excited to share about. And I want you to be a part of it all. And if you want to follow me on social media, like here on YouTube or over on Instagram or on TikTok, my handle is Our Great House, but just don't follow me in real life though, because that's creepy. <laughs> Bye.